Septic arthritis is an acute infectious monoarthritis typically affecting large joints such as the knee and hip. Septic arthritis is a diagnosis not to be missed. It's a surgical emergency and if left untreated causes irreversible damage to a joint. The commonest causative agent is Staphylococcus aureus, the gram-positive diplococci. Others include gonococcus in adults, pneumococcus, H. influenza, which used to be the commonest cause in children before the introduction of the vaccine, and gram-negative antidotes, such as E. coli. There are various methods of spread, the most common being hematogenous, or via the blood. The synovial membrane is highly vascularized, and bacteria can thus enter the synovial joint quite easily through the bloodstream. Other methods of inoculation include direct invasion, such as a penetrating wound, intraarticular injection or arthroscopy, or contiguous spread from an adjacent bone abscess. Infection of the synovial membrane, usually from hematogenous spread, causes an inflammatory reaction producing a purulent exudate and an increased production of synovial fluid. The accumulating pus results in destruction and erosion of articular cartilage by bacterial and proteolytic enzymes released by the synovial and inflammatory cells. If the infection goes untreated, they may be spread to underlying bone or burst out of the joint to form abscesses and sinuses. A further complication of no treatment is eventual alkalosis. A thorough history and physical examination should give you a high level of suspicion of a septic arthritis. Investigation should be carried out to confirm the diagnosis and subsequent individualized management should be commenced. The usual symptom package include pain in the affected joint, acute in nature, unable to bear weight, impaired range of motion. It is also important to ask about previous disease or trauma and extra articular symptoms. On examination, the joint will have signs of inflammation, such as erythema, warmth, swelling, and tenderness. There will be limited active and passive range of motion, and the joint will be unable to bear weight. The patient might be pyrexic, have an antalgic gait, and keep the joint in a position aligned with maximum joint space. In neonates, there is an emphasis on septicemia of joint pain. The baby is irritable and refuses to feed. It is important to not miss concomitant osteomyelitis in an adjacent bone end. With both neonates and children, check for tachycardia and a fever. Key investigations needed to make a diagnosis of bloods and a diagnostic joint aspiration. Imaging may be used to exclude other pathologies, as x-rays show no early changes. There will be a full blood count showing increased white cells, with a differential illustrating neutrophilia. The ESR will be above 40 and CRP above 20. Blood culture is positive in 80% of cases. Synovial joint aspiration will show a purulent appearance with low viscosity, an increased white cell count of over 100,000, a decreased glucose, and positive bacteriology. Culture sensitivity will give a definitive diagnosis and guide treatment. The differential of a monoarthritis include TB, which would have an insidious onset and an ESR of above 100, an acute bleed of hemophiliacs, which will show blood on synovial joint aspiration, and a fracture, where you'd ask about trauma history. On high clinical suspicion of septic arthritis, immediately book the at a time. Preoperative management includes the immediate commencement of cloxicillin as irreversible damage occurs within hours. Ensure adequate analgesia and fluids, as children usually become dehydrated due to septicemia. Intraoperative management is an open procedure where the joint is washed out with at least 5 litres of warm saline. Postoperative management includes 2 weeks of IV antibiotics before a further 4 weeks of oral flu cloxicillin. Physiotherapy here is important to regain range of motion in the affected joint. In summary, septic arthritis is a surgical emergency. Patients present with an inflamed and non-weight-bearing joint. The most common causative agent is staph aureus. Always do an FBC, CRP, and ESR in addition to your diagnostic joint aspirate. Start antibiotics and send for a washout as soon as possible. Created using Powtoon.